Hi, guys. I'm just spotting familiar faces in the audience. So many of you. Good, so welcome. I was nine years old when I saw my first magic show, a grand magic show, and I was amazed. How can they do that? How can you make a pigeon appear out of nowhere? And the thing that appealed to me the most was the hypnotism. The magicians brought some people on stage, they hypnotized them, and made them do anything that the magician told them. And I wanted to learn that. I said, if I can learn that, that would be so much fun. But do you guys recognize this picture? Anybody? No? It's a show called Magic for Humans on Netflix. It's an amazing show. I recommend you watch it. Uh, but my love for magic continued. When I was 13 years old, I actually learned hypnotism. I won't tell you what happened. For that, you can come and meet me later. But magic has always thrilled me. And the ability to talk to people, persuade them, that has been something that I've studied for a long time. But if any of you have liked magic and bought a magic kit, you will open the magic kit and you will see the instruments, you will try it out. Most likely, you will be disappointed. Why? Because you think, oh, it's so simple. Even I can do it. If it is simple, it's not useful. That is what we believe at times. But that is so untrue. Magicians, marketeers, businesses, they all work on some simple principles. And those simple principles actually create magic on stage and off stage. Simplicity is so hard to get. But if you can put things in a simple way, they can actually be magical. And, you know, when I was studying persuasion, I saw that persuasion is not new. You know, persuasion is not something that requires cutting-edge technology. Why? Because persuasion has been around from ever. You see all these big leaders, influencers, kings, you know, all the people, philosophers, they have always used persuasion. And they didn't need Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. How could they do it? And when I was searching for all that, I actually stumbled upon a secret. What I realized that for persuasion, for marketing to work, to get a yes from anybody, what you need to do most is understand the fundamental human nature. If you can understand the human nature, you can do a lot. So let me tell you that secret, a secret that magicians use, marketeers use, and everybody who has influence uses. The secret is like this. People will do anything for those who encourage their dreams justify their failures, allay their fears, confirm their suspicion, and help them throw rocks at their enemies. Very simple, 27 words, yeah? Okay, you want to take a picture? Take a picture. Good. So, at this stage, and while we're thinking about this sentence and how it applies to us, what I would really love for you guys to do is to think about your audience. Think about your target. Think about a person that you want to get a yes from. Right? 
because you will come here, sit in your chair, learn something new, that's not going to make a difference. What's really going to make a difference is if you can go out in the world, talk to somebody, and get a yes from them. Would it? Yeah? So let's do that as an exercise. Think about one person. Think about one specific target that you want to influence. And then what we'll do is we'll break this sentence into its components and see how we can apply that to that sentence. Easy? Up for it? Good. And if you've got notepads uh, or your phones, you may want to do some work with me as we go ahead. So let's break it down. The first word is people. We want to influence people, not computers. So always remember, when you're communicating, there is a real human on the other side. And humans have emotions. Humans have desires. Humans have goals. So it's about people. And people will do anything. They will do anything. So it's about the future. You want to give first and then ask for a favor. They will do anything, but what is that anything will depend on the value that they receive. They won't do it for everybody, though. They will do it for those who. So people will do anything for some other people, not for some random person, but for those people who do what? Who? Encourage their dreams first. Look, a lot of parents, they steer their kids into choices and careers that are more normal. They are safe, risk averse. And that's more true for all Asian families. And they steer their kids that way, and the kids also believe that that is normal. And then they don't pursue their dreams. Then what happens? Suddenly, a stranger comes in, and the stranger encourages them to pursue their dreams. The stranger believes more in them. Who do you think will have more power? The parents or the stranger? Makes sense, right? At this stage, I wanted to think about your audience, the person that you wanted to get a yes from. What are their dreams? What are their aspirations? What are their desires? What is it that they are out there to get? Take a moment, think about it. OK? We don't like failure, do we? None of us likes failure. And what we do not like even more than the failure is taking responsibility for it. We know that taking responsibility gives us power over our actions. It's true. It's a known fact. Yet, we don't want to take responsibility and we want to blame it to some circumstance, we want to blame it to somebody else, and just move on. Okay? And we've seen this so many times. Have you seen politicians? What do they do? There is a failure. What do they do? Blame it on somebody else. Right? Justifying their failures. It's used again and again and again. The flip side is also true. If you, so the flip side of like responsibility gives you power is also true. If you can assure somebody that they are not responsible for their failures, you will have influence over them. If they take responsibility for their failures, they will have power. If you assure them that they are not responsible, you will have power. So you want to justify their failures. In the world of marketing, the justification of failure is by softening the burden of the failure. So you can basically talk about, you know, they did the right choice. In that particular situation, it was right for them to do that, right? 
Now, the next is allay their fears. Fear stops us from taking action. And it's possible that we will get like jammed. We can't take action if you're afraid. Telling somebody not to be afraid doesn't help. If I'm afraid getting up on the stage and you tell me don't fear, it's not going to work. What works with fear is to be empathetic and work with people until they get over their own fears. Okay? So we want to allay their fears. In marketing, how does this work? Anything that gets you quicker, better, faster results, that's removing, allaying your fears. Then we want to confirm their suspicion. Whenever somebody tells us something that we believe in to be true, is true, we feel a sudden surge of superiority. And that surge of superiority also comes in with another thing that we feel good about the person who confirmed our suspicion. We start to like them. So whatever is our dream, top marketeers will tell us, yes, what you thought is a hurdle in getting you to your dream is true. It's a hurdle. And use my solution to overcome that hurdle. So that's confirming the suspicion. Easy, isn't it? Anytime you're struggling with somebody, something, somebody, you always want people on your side. You want somebody to be with you to throw rocks at your enemies. Who's the enemy? It could be a situation, it could be a circumstance, it could be anything. But if you can think about your audience once again and think about what is that enemy that they want to slay, and if you can be with them while they slay their demon together, you're their friend. You become their partner. So let's do a test. Think about a person in your life that you have a great chemistry with. Somebody like very close to you, you have great chemistry with. And check which of these five things apply. Do they encourage you in your dreams? Do they justify your failures? Do they help you throw rocks against the enemy? Do they confirm the suspicion? Most likely, you will be checking multiple boxes. Think about a product that you love. Think about their website and see whether that checks on any of these. I can bet they'll check more than one box. It's a principle that is time-tested and works. Look, deep, satisfying relationships, okay, they are built on one or more of these principles because these are deep human emotions that everybody wants to get take care of. While we talked about all this, there is one thing that is missing, one missing piece. The entire sentence doesn't talk about you. There is no you. Persuasion is not about you. Persuasion is about the other person. You don't need to have an impressive, charismatic personality. You don't need to have great communication skills. You don't need to be able to come up on stage and speak. That is not required. What is required is your focus on the other person. Imagine you're talking to somebody in a conversation. Your arguments are great. Your offer is great. Your product is great. What are you doing? You're looking at the wall. The person is here. Is it going to work? No. Focus on the other person. All right. Last. The deepest relationship, once again, are not based on the duration of your dialogue. The deepest relationships are based on the depth of the acknowledgement and taking care of the deep human emotions. You want to focus on taking care of those human emotions. And that's my secret to you guys. I hope you get a yes today. Thank you.